Hi, I'm Brandy. Thanks for stopping by. In this video, we're going to be doing a chest makeover and decoupaging a horse on the front of it. I picked up this dresser um, off of OfferUp for 20 bucks, and it had been chilling in my garage for a few months, uh, just waiting for me to get around to it. Um, but I was excited about this one because I've done a lot of similar uh, chests before. They're really good and quick flips. Uh, for this particular project, a uh, cousin of mine wanted to get a, a dresser for her daughter and she is a horse crazy girl. So I volunteered to um, paint it and decoupage a horse on there to fit into the theme that she's going in her room. So I was super excited to get to start on this project. As you can see, it's a pretty decent uh, dresser. It's, it's not in bad shape. There's a couple scratches on the top, but uh, very minor, nothing too significant that needed repairs. All the all of the drawers seemed to work pretty good as well. So the first order of business is always to remove all of the hardware. I always do this step before cleaning, just so that if there's any you know dirt and stuff underneath the knobs, I'm able to get that cleaned up. Uh, at, for this dresser, I'm not reusing these same poles, but I throw them in a Ziploc bag. Um, and I threw them in my stash because they can come in handy on a future project. But for this dresser, I really had something else in mind and I knew I was gonna be updating the hardware. The next thing I did was just gave this sucker a good scrub down with some Dawn dish soap and water. Dawn dish soap works good as a degreaser. And um, so I scrubbed it down, made sure to get off all of the dirt and nastiness. And then after I had gave it a good scrubbing with the Dawn dish soap, I circled back with a you know clean wet rag just to wipe it to wipe it clean cleaning is always a critical step before applying any sort of pro uh, product to the furniture uh, you don't want to be applying paint or primer or anything along those lines on top of a nasty dirty piece of furniture next step is I came in with some 150 grit sandpaper and I first started working on the top I really wanted to get the top leveled out and as even as possible especially because there was a lot of scratches up there and um, I needed a nice smooth surface to um, be working with so I went over the top a few different times with the 150 grit and then I circled back with 220 grit went over the top again as well as all of the sides and the drawer fronts so the 220 grit uh, really is just kind of like a scuff sanding i'm not trying to take any of the finish off of the sides of the dresser i just want that surface to be a little rough so that it gives something for my paint to adhere to and once i was done sanding it I wiped everything down in order to do a inside and out cleaning I removed the drawers and then I went in side with my wet rag and I wiped down everything just to get all the dust and dirt off of the outside as well as the inside I used the bin primer shellac base uh, as my primer for this and then I just used a roller and uh, it helped to do an easy application of the primer, especially on the flat surfaces. I also had a, um, a brush handy that I was able to use to get into any little crevices of the body of the dresser. So primer is not needed necessarily when you're using chalk paint, which is what I'm gonna be using for this project, but um, it definitely helps. It helps to balance the color it helps to prevent any bleed through later on after you've applied the paint, especially if the surface has been um, broken through. So I have uh, done a lot of projects, some with primer, some without, and I just find that even if I'm going um, darker with the color, in this case, I was planning to go with a black, but either way, um, I have found that using primer before applying the paint has made a significant difference. So it's definitely a staple in my um in my process now moving forward
So this is what we were looking at after the primer had been applied to the dresser and all five drawers. So I just um, gave that some time to dry. And once everything had dried, I just brought everything inside to go through next steps. And this is my little Zinnia. She looks so cute, so I had to include her. Um, so I brought everything inside and laid it all out in my living room where I was going to be able to work in the comfort of my living room and listen to music or watch TV or whatever. Uh, so the next step was just to do a quick um, in-between coat sanding. So this was a 220 grit sanding block that I'm using um, just to smooth everything out and then wiping it back with a lint-free cloth. Now, if you haven't already done so, please like and subscribe. I come out with new content weekly and um, definitely always having a furniture project going on and I like to share my journey with you all. For this project, I'm using the bare chalk paint in the blackest color that they had. Uh, I just went to the counter and said, give me the blackest color, that's what I want. And I'm using for this project similar to um, my process with the primer I'm rolling on as much as possible with a roller and then using a chalk paint brush to get into all of those little crevices as you can see um, this black went on amazingly it's just the color applied really good I mean that's inevitable when you're using such a dark color as black um, so one coat of this black paint really did give some pretty decent coverage. I ended up using three coats total on this entire project just for that extra uh, coverage. And I uh, wanted to make sure the, cover, the color was even all around, but um, this is the best part, painting. I really do love using the bare chalk paint. Um, I get it at Home Depot, it's right down the street. It's pretty easy I just go in pick my color they um, can basically tint it to any of the colors that they have on the wall and it's uh, it's definitely a paint that I've been using consistently I am in no uh, way sponsored by them but uh, I've found that this paint works pretty good although later on I'll probably be venturing off to try some other chalk paints I know a lot of uh, the other content creators out there order chalk online and such and that's definitely been something that I've been considering but usually I am ready to start a project and I get it out and that's when I decide what color I want and what style I'm going for and then if I could just run down the street and pick it up really quick right then and there it makes it a lot easier for me to start and finish the project. Once that first coat of paint had dried, it was time to do a that in-between coat light sanding with the 220 grit sanding sponge here. So very lightly, just to smooth things out, make sure there's no bubbles, etc. And then wipe that back with my lint-free cloth. So as I mentioned earlier, I did a total of three coats of the black paint following the same process between all three coats, uh, applying the paint, waiting for it to dry, circling back um, with a quick 
smoothing out, sanding in between, wiping it back, and then proceeding on to the next coat of paint. So this is what we were looking at after all three coats of paint had been applied and everything had dried. I was very happy with the color. It just looked really good on this chest. It gives it that nice sleek finish to it. It's pretty, um, the chalk paint does leave it a matte finish and that's exactly what I was going for. I knew I was gonna be putting on a top coat of wax later so that would give it that little bit of sheen that it needed. So this is the Paper that I'm going to be using for the decoupage. I'll be honest, this is my first go at putting um, a picture like this onto a piece of furniture with a decoupage method. I did use decoupage one time in the past in my previous video, if you want to check that out, that I did a lingerie chest where I did some floral paper decoupage on the sides of the drawers that you can see when you pull them out. And I'll link that video down in the description if you wanna check that out. But um, that was pretty easy. This, this process here was a little bit much different, I should say, um, than that because I was working with such a big, large piece uh, and a big, large picture on the front of it. So what I did here is I just started kind of lining it up to where I wanted the horse to be positioned. And then I started to, um, once I had it you know, where I wanted it, I started creasing through the drawer spaces. Now, because there is a little piece um, in between the drawers, I didn't wanna just put the whole thing on there and then cut it after the fact. So I came in here and just started creasing in between those drawers so that I can cut the paper into multiple pieces and apply it in, um, in sections. I just felt like that was gonna be more um, reasonable for me to apply it. Um, 
especially being my first time doing this. So I just used my smoother tool and started defining those creases on where the drawers were separated so that I can pull the paper back and then cut it to size. I will be honest, this was very intimidating for me to start, but I was excited. I really wanted to try uh, to decoupage something on, the, on a large piece like this. I was intimidated, but I was ready to, uh, to get to work on it. It's very tedious. Uh, a lot of little details trying to get everything smoothed out, which you'll see in just a little bit here but I was very pleased with the outcome. So stay tuned if you wanna see how I blended this uh, horse into the front of this dresser. Once I had my line creased out for the initial drawer, I went ahead and just started kind of cutting out the horse in a sense. I didn't cut it like right along the horse because I wanted to blend the blacks together because the page itself was already a black background, uh, but it wasn't gonna be an exact match to the black that I had already applied to the dresser. So I knew I was gonna be doing some, some blending in there. So I definitely left some space on, um, on both sides of the horse before I cut out my, um, my drawers and in between drawer pieces. So once everything was cut out, I then lined it up on the dresser just to reassure myself of the positioning of where I wanted the horse. And then I removed the drawers so that I could start with the little sliver of paper that I had to go in between the drawers so that I can use that as a guide for the rest of the piece. Once everything was lined up, I then started applying my adhesive. I'm using Mod Podge in a satin finish so that the picture has that sheen. And so I just applied a smooth um, coat of the Mod Podge here, or Mod Podge, I don't know. I always say Mod Podge, but I think it's, it's actually Mod Podge. And um, so once the Mod Podge had been applied, I then just started lining up that piece of uh, paper and then smoothing it out from center out, uh, very carefully trying to push out any bubbles or any creases so that um, it would be as smooth as possible. And then as I started working my way to the sides, I added more of the Mod Podge uh, as necessary. I picked up this little roller thingamabobber off of Amazon. I don't remember what it's called, but I'll link it in the description below. And it kind of just helps to smooth everything out. Um, I got a lot of the smoothing done with my finger there, but this roller kind of helps to move any bubbles out of the way um, and such. So it's definitely a helpful little tool. So once that line had been applied, I went ahead and put the bottom drawer back in so that I could line up my paper um, for that bottom drawer. Now I wanted, because the drawers kind of protrude a little bit, I wanted to make sure to get the tops of the drawers that would show so that the photo kind of folded over from the top of the drawer 
onto the front of the drawer so it gave it that seamless picture whether you were looking at it straight on or even from above especially for the bottom drawer uh, oftentimes if you're standing over it you're going to be looking down so i wanted to make sure that you were able to see that picture on the top of the drawer and so for um for this uh process i just did the same thing as the middle once i had it all lined up i started applying the mod podge um, in sections and then smoothing out the paper um, as much as possible applying more of the mod podge and continuing to smooth that out um, and then i did the same process for um, all of the drawers where the picture was going to be applied now i'd love to hear from you all in the comments especially if you are experienced with decoupage there are a bunch of different methods out there i watched so many videos all of them were very very helpful um, i've seen process where um, they've used heat and kind of ironed it on i've seen uh, saran wrap being used to assist in a decoupage method so i'd love to hear what you feel is the best and easiest method that gives it the smoothest finish my picture came out pretty smooth there were some very minor creases and kind of wrinkles in the finished project uh, or product but it I, I loved it i loved the way it turned out um, i did struggle a little bit to get those creases out so i'm very curious to know if you have any tips for me um, and again you know what what's your method what have you learned that i could learn from you um, or just any comments that you want to uh, talk to me about in the comment section i'd be happy to respond um, there as well again if you haven't already done so make sure to hit that subscribe button so that uh, you can follow me on my journey i'm always coming out with new projects and uh, i'd love to have you uh love to have you here Once the whole picture was um, affixed to the drawers, I just kept continuing to smooth things out. And then once I felt it was, you know, pretty good and smooth and there were no bubbles or anything significant that was sticking out, I then came back in with the Mod Podge and just went over it. This was to fully seal it in and make sure it gives it that protective layer over the picture as well so i did 
three coats of the Mod Podge and um, I just put it on the entire on the entire drawer or the entire drawers just uh, so that it had even coverage and that one piece of the drawer you know the the part that contained the picture wasn't a different uh, texture or anything like that than the rest of the drawers and right now it looks like there's a picture on there and you can see the paper and all that good stuff but don't worry stay with me I then after applying the three coats of the Mod Podge and letting it dry I then came back in and started blending uh, the base color into the picture So once all three coats of the Mod Podge had dried, I came back in with a um, with a small brush to get around the the outside lining of the actual horse, and um, and then I also used my chalk paint brush, the same one I used for painting, and I just started to kind of blend that color into the edge of the picture, and I did so by dabbing, as you can see here, I was. Um, you know just dabbing the color on to kind of give it a little bit of texture and to disguise the outline of the actual page that was uh, definitely showing from just putting it on there so I went over with this dabbing of the color probably about three coats of this to really alleviate that paper line um, so that it was blended in and you couldn't clearly see it i mean if you knew it was there and you wanted to get all up close and personal you definitely see it but i think it came out pretty good as you can see here you can't really see that outline very well so it just came out beautifully this horse is amazing i'll also link in the description box this picture where i got it along with every other supply that i used um, for this piece so after everything had dried, I came back in with the bare decorative, decorative wax in a clear and I just went over the entire dresser and um, rubbed the wax on with a brush and then buffed it out with a lint-free cloth. I did three coats of this wax over the entire um, piece of furniture, uh, drawers, the top, the sides even over the picture that I had already decoupaged, I still wanted to make sure that I gave all of that black that I had blended into the picture and around the sides that needed coverage and I wanted it to be consistent across the entire uh, drawers. So I used that wax to go over everything. And the wax, um, you know, it gives it kind of a matte with a bit of a sheen to it very light sheen but um, it definitely helps to deepen that color and give it that protective coat so again tell me what you think tell me what you think of this project what did i do right what did i do wrong it was definitely a learning experience for me uh, but i was very happy to do it i'll definitely be doing decoupage again in the future and i will consider any and all uh, suggestions that you all have on how i can um, make this technique or improve on this technique for any future projects. So once all the wax had dried, the three coats, I was ready to apply my hardware. I got these cute little horses off of Amazon. 
and they had so much detail I just thought that they would look amazing so I got two sets of those which was four knobs and I used those four for the top and then I used some horseshoe stars for the bottom and this is what the finished project came out to be um, I think that these unique little poles really brought together the entire piece it gave it character um, I loved the way that this thing came out and I'm so excited to um, present this dresser to Camilla who is um, the little girl who's gonna be getting it she's my cousin's daughter or my cousin-in-law's daughter um, so she's a horse crazy girl and this is going in her room and I think she's definitely gonna love it so when you see the close-up here you can kind of see that line but not from far away and here's a recap so that you can see again what we started with so thanks for stopping by remember to like and subscribe see you soon